Hi there, I'm Ian from LearnPracticalGist.com. In previous videos, I've talked to you about where you might get uh, GIST data from, off the shelf, from satellite imagery, um, you know, from paper maps, from your own maps, and so forth. But once you've got these, um, these data, or particularly with paper maps, how do you get information from a paper map into your geographical information system? And that's what I want to talk to you about today. The process is known as digitisation, and it's uh, it's how you convert lines on a map into lines in your GIS, uh, points on a map, you know, telephone boxes or whatever, into points in your GIS, and polygons, areas, property outlines, uh, and so forth, into polygons in your GIS. It's a very, very important thing. I have to tell you up front that this uh, process called digitisation or digitising is very, very fiddly, uh, very, very time consuming, uh, very prone to error, very frustrating, all that sort of thing. But if you make the effort, I can almost guarantee that you'll be so pleased at the end that you've done it. Now, if you think that as a GIS professional that you can um, avoid um, digitising. Well, maybe you can, maybe you've come into an organisation at a point where all that work's been done. Uh, maybe there's a whole bank of people in another building or something that's uh, doing this for you. Uh, but if you work in um, some organisation that has not been through this process, uh, that has poor quality data, and so forth, and you think that you can get away with this, I think that more often than not, you're just lazy. It concerns me that I see in so many um, organisations just laziness in the GIS department. Um, they're, they're so consumed with the technology that, they're, they're, um, that they avoid putting the, um, the mapping into their system. And it's the mapping that's the foundation of any GIS. And I see projects that really just fail because the GIS department fails to put in appropriate uh, quality data. But once, if you go to that effort of putting your own information in, you'll just be amazed at, uh, at how much better the outcomes in. Okay, so we're talking about your putting your own mapping in. Now there's two broad um, ways that you can get information in. They're both known as digitising. One is using a digitising tablet and the other is uh, using a scanner and scanning your map and bringing your map in. Now I think in this video I'll just talk about um, using the digitising tablet. So um, a digitising tablet there's one of them on screen at the moment. Basically, it has, it, it's a large, um, uh, very highly engineered um, piece of, of kit that has a series, a very, very dense series of, of wires uh, running through it. And it has um, a, a mouse-like thing called a puck. And the puck has a, a magnifying lens in it and um, and a crosshair on it. And you can very finely, you run over the features on your map, or first of all, you stick the map to the, um, to the digitizer and you run over the map with your puck, going click, 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 and um, the, the data comes in to your GIS. Now, back to me, imagine that this map here is a map that we're inputting. What you would do is, first of all, you would probably turn it up the right way. You stick, and I'm just going to use uh, magnets for the moment. You stick it as near as square as you possibly can, and you use, excuse me, where did I put it? Doesn't matter. Yes, it does. You use what I've got here, it's not labelled, but it's removable tape. It's not just any old sticky tape. Any old sticky tape is far too sticky for, um, for digitising. 
And I'll move this across here because it's uh, be easier on the camera. It's far too sticky for digitizing. Um, it can damage your digitizer and it can also damage the mapping that you put on it. Okay? So normally what you would do is you get this removable tape, you know, click, put a piece on that corner, piece on that corner, piece on that corner, piece on that corner. You make sure that it's flat. Okay? It's very important. It's very important that it's flat because um, what, what you can get is if it's bunched up like that, you can, um, it, it can create problems, displacement when you're going along it like that, when you're digitising off it like that. So you want it to be flat first off. You want it to be square, it's uh, best if it's square. You start off by digitising each of the corners. So you get your puck, imagine this is a puck, it's just a mouse off my computer. You may imagine this is a puck, you put it over the corner and you go click on the corner and you punch into your GIS the XY coordinate, the latitude, longitude of this corner. You do the same for this, for this and for this. So four XY coordinates to, uh, and bounding coordinates preferably. Okay, so outside of the items that you'll be digitising. Okay. So if, we, if I was to digitise this map, I'd digitise those four points, put in the X, Y coordinates, and then I'd come along and I'd go click to the boundary, click, I'd define that I'm going to digitise a line. You have to define that you're digitising a line. And you go click, click. In fact, I'll zoom in maybe. Let me zoom in a bit closer. Uh, and I'll go click, 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 etc. until I um, go right, was to go right around this. And in fact, yeah, I'd, um, all I could in some GISs or some digitising programs define it as being a polygon. But that's neither here nor there for the minute. Okay, and then if I was to digitise this, I'd go click, 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 and probably finish just there, okay? And continue along that until I've completed the whole map. Like I say, it is a very, very tricky and laborious, labour-intensive process, one that people don't generally like doing, but is so, so worth the effort of, of doing if you do it, if you decide to do it. This map here, for example, here's, here's a map if, um, that I produced recently for a project, and, and the map is actually, it's an ease of digging mapping uh, map for a water utility that was, um, that was putting in a sewer into an area. And I worked, um, teamed up with a, um, what we call it, a geomorphologist, and soil scientist, and what we did is we interpreted areas where we would find um, three classes basically. There's, we had six classes here, but the final map ended up with three classes, basically very rocky, moderately rocky, and, um, and deep soil. And that helped the water utility understand the sorts of problems that they were going to come across um, if they were to um, bring their backhoes into this area. Now, the reason that we went out in the field and created this map is because this map didn't exist. The only soil mapping um, over this area had all this area here as one shade, okay, as one soil type. And what we ended up with is, like I say, we defined six soil types, um, but we narrowed that down to three in the end. This is the sort of um, stuff that is really, really valuable to, um, to different projects. And you need to understand how to digitise to bring these sort of data in. Anyway, in the next video, I want to talk about um, scanning data and, and uh, bringing data in via scanning. Okay, that's it for this. This is Ian from LearnPracticalDist.com.
www.ghostbusters.com. And if you're not on my list, um, make sure that you put your name into um, the box. You go to uh, courses uh, or learnpracticalgist.com or courses.learnpracticalgist.com. Find the box, download the free ebook. You'll get on my list and I'll send you a series of emails with uh, these sorts of videos in them, um, probably on a weekly basis it's looking like I'll be doing them. Okay, bye.